If you want to know how to use exercise to improve your heart health and decrease the risk of heart attacks, strokes, and so on, you've come to the right place. Because here, we're going to talk about the right way to exercise for heart health. Not just a good way, but the best possible way. And what does the research have to say about different methods of exercise for improving heart health? What's better, cardio or strength training? How many minutes? What intensity? What duration? How many times per week? Not all of them are the same. Not all exercises is created equal. In this video, you'll learn the exact right way to exercise for heart health. And what are some measurements of heart health? How do we know that something is improving heart health or not? Well, the most common measurements of heart health are things like total cholesterol, as well as its subfractions like LDL and HDL, blood pressure, as well as triglycerides. So that's really what we're looking at when it comes to exercise and how it affects heart health. In one study, Inactive women did eight weeks of interval training. And so here's what, here's what their protocol was. They did it three times per week. They did 10 intervals and the intervals went like this. They did a max effort for 15 seconds. This was followed by 30 seconds of rest. And again, this went on for a few minutes and the results were they had drops in their fasting blood sugar, total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, CRP or C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation, as, it was well, as well as an increase in HDL cholesterol. By all accounts, this was a pretty successful study when it comes to heart health. But in one meta-analysis, people doing cardio only for six weeks, they saw a 4.6% increase in their HDL cholesterol and a 3.7% drop in their triglycerides and a 5% drop in their LDL cholesterol. By all conclusion, all exercise is good, but some are better than others. What they found in that study is that higher intensities and higher durations yield the best results. And what is a higher intensity? A higher intensity is between 70 to 85% of your maximal heart rate. And a higher duration, it's recommended about 150 minutes per week, whether that's 50 minutes three times per week or, or 30 minutes five times per week, doesn't matter as long as the intensity and the duration are there. But again, you can get great benefits for heart health even with lower intensities and durations. In another study, 111 sedentary overweight adults with bad uh, cholesterol profiles were recruited and they were divided into four groups. Group number one was the control group, they didn't exercise. Group number two did high, uh, high duration, high intensity. So their duration was, uh, the equivalent of 20 miles per week and their intensity was between 70 and 85% of their maximal heart rate. Group number three did high intensity and low volume. So they used the same intensity, 70 to 85% of the maximal heart rate, but they only um, ran or walked the equivalent of 12 miles per week. And group number four used moderate intensity and a low volume. They exercised at an intensity of 50 to 65% of their maximal heart rate um, and they only went for 12 miles per week. Okay, so these were our four groups. Uh, the results were this. The total cholesterol was basically unchanged or slightly elevated in all the groups. Whether they exercised a lot or didn't exercise at all, didn't change their cholesterol. The LDL was slightly elevated in groups one, three, and four, but slightly lowered in group two, which was the high intensity, high, uh, high duration. Um, the HDL was about the same in groups one, three, and four, and about 10% higher in group two. HDL cholesterol is what we consider to be the good cholesterol, so that's good when it's elevated. Um, and the LDL particles, not necessarily the LDL cholesterol, uh, were higher in groups one, three, and four, and lower in group two. What does that tell us? It means that intensity and duration are both important. Uh, so high intensity, higher volume is the best for heart health, while lower intensities and volumes are also beneficial. It's just that more is better in this case, to a certain extent. Here they didn't find what's the limit where there's diminishing returns. Then in one study, women were divided into two groups. Group number one did no exercise. Group number two did strength training. Their strength training was three times per week and they used a weight that corresponded to 85% of their one repetition maximum. And the results were this. Their total cholesterol dropped about 7% their LDL cholesterol dropped by about 21%, and there were no changes in their, H, uh, in their HDL cholesterol or triglycerides, so pretty powerful. And for a much lower time exchange or time commitment, there was a much greater improvement in cholesterol profiles compared to cardio. Not bad. And by the way, if all of this is confusing to you right now, we're at the end of the video, we're going to bring this all home together with some bottom line recommendations that you can follow. But don't skip ahead because there's more to the story. The other thing we want to know is what's the right intensity 
to improve. They say low intensity, moderate intensity, high, super high. So that's exactly what they tried to find out in this next study. They divided people into four different groups who did strength training. One group exercised did strength training at about 50% of their one repetition maximum. Group number two, 75%. Group number three, 90%. Group number four, 110%. If you're wondering how can they use more weight than they can lift, it's because they had a partner lift their weight with them and then they just lower the weight. The partner lifts the weight and then they lower the weight. And so that's how they divided them up. And here were the results of the study. Um, the groups exercising at 50 and 75% actually showed the greatest improvements in cholesterol, LDL, HDL, and triglycerides. Why? Because when you use lighter weights, you can do more reps. So it appears that for strength improvements, higher weights are better. But for cholesterol improvements, lower, well, moderate to lower weights are better. So 50 to 75% for cholesterol and triglyceride improvements appear to be the sweet spot. However, as far as strength training is concerned, the study that showed the greatest benefits was one that basically combined cardio and strength training, but essentially called it strength training. This was a very innovative study design that rather than giving people a certain number of repetitions, instead what they did is they asked participants to do a, strength, a single strength training exercise for 30 seconds. They just needed to complete as many repetitions of that exercise as they could in 30 seconds. Now, the target was to do 15 exercises, and when they did, after they did their 30 seconds of exercise, they alternated that with 30 seconds of either walking or jogging. And for the entire duration of the, of the session, they had to make a, uh, a heart rate, a pulse, of between 70 to 80% of their max. This was done for 45 minutes, three times per week in month one, and four times per week in month two. And what were the results of this? Well, their total cholesterol dropped by 8%, and their triglycerides dropped by 25%. As far as a strength training only kind of study is concerned, this, this showed the greatest uh, drops in cholesterol and triglycerides compared to everything else. Now, sometimes, so far we've been just comparing cardio versus strength training. But why can't it be both? Why can't we do cardio and strength training? Why can't we all just get along? <laughs> so are there any studies that combine cardio with strength training? And what are the effects on cholesterol levels? Are they better than some of their parts? Are they worse than some of their parts? Or are they equal to some of their parts? Well, that's what these two studies wanted to find out. In one study where participants did both cardio and strength training, their LDL cholesterol dropped by 26%. In another study, where both strength training and cardio were used, their total cholesterol dropped by 19%, far superior to, any, to either one by themselves. LDL cholesterol also dropped by 19%, triglycerides dropped by 17%, and another marker of cardiovascular health called arterial stiffness dropped by about 7%. Arterial stiffness basically as the name implies is how stiff are the arteries. We want nice, flexible, loose arteries. If the arteries are stiff, it increases the risk of heart attacks and strokes. So what's our bottom line conclusion from all this research? We've talked about cardio alone, strength training alone, cardio and strength training together. I threw a lot of variables at you, like what's the number of times per week, what's the number of reps, sets, etc. cetera. Here, is the, here are the bottom line recommendations. Ideally, I'm gonna give you the ideal recommendations and also the time crunch recommendations. If you have unlimited time, unlimited energy, ideally you would be exercising six times per week, about three or four strength and two or three cardio. For your strength training workouts, you should be using between two and four sets of about 10 to 20 repetitions, getting pretty close to muscular failure. And you wanna be using eight to 10, to 10 exercises for your whole body. Not just eight exercises for one body part, but you wanna spread them out over your entire body. That is your recommendation for strength training. As for cardio, we wanna be doing about two to three days per week of 45 minutes or more per session, and the intensity is very important. You wanna be using an intensity of over 70% of your maximal heart rate. And what is your maximal heart rate? Well, you subtract your age from 220. So if you're 50 years old, you subtract 50 from 220 and you end up with 170. And you multiply, you take 70% of 170, and that's your minimum pulse. So you wanna be exercising above that pulse. Now that's the ideal condition. What if you're time crunched? What if you don't have six days per week for exercise or you just don't wanna exercise six days per week? What do you do then? Then you do three days per week and you combine cardio and strength training. You do timed sets, so you pick any exercise and you do that as many times as you can in 30 seconds. 
After that, you rest for another 30 seconds. And by rest, you could be walking, you could be jogging, etc. And then you do that again with a different exercise for another 30 seconds. So you combine strength training with cardio, and that is done for about 45 minutes, three days per week. And this is essentially the ultimate protocol for exercise for heart health. I hope you like this video. My name is Igor. If you like, click like and subscribe.